let's go to the initial data tab on our smoke object, DOP, and say, click and drag on your out here and drop it into density sop path. And you'll see, there's our pig head. Now as it stands, our simulation container area is not actually big enough. So let me make it a little bigger. And in our case, I'm going to say, we're gonna to wanna to have a little bit more space for it to move around in, because you know it's going to, some turbulent wind is going to blow it around a little bit. So we're gonna need some space for it to go. The solver can only solve, oops, what's in this box. The solver can't solve everything in the scene. It would take, well, it would take an infinity amount of computational power. For every voxel that there is, there are all kinds of mathematical equations are being performed by the power solver to find out what the new state of all the velocities are, what the new state of the density positions are. And the more voxels there are, the longer it's gonna take. And then when you factor in things like the substeps that we talked about earlier out here, it'll take everything that we want to do we add collisions, we add forces, everything that we add to the sim is gonna take more and more time. So you're always trying to find the best trade-off between the amount of voxels in your scene, in your simulation, and what it will actually look like. We still have our camera here, so this is what our simulations could look like. Very coarse. I'm gonna turn this off while we're out here. So this is the original source, which is much more resolution than this one does. So I'm gonna say, well, we wanna keep it low, but we could probably do more than that. So here's our division size. Let's slowly bring the division size down. Because the, slow, the smaller the division size is, the more resolution it will have. So that's starting to look better. If I middle click on this, I can see, oh, the smoke object has density volume inside of it now. And kind of out in our SOP land over here, we have the voxel count and the dimensions. So in here, we can see there are more voxels because we, we needed some extra space for it to move and more voxels overall. Before we did this, if we take that back out, we middle click, you'll see, there's just, it says smoke object one, but there's nothing, there's no sub data here. Putting this back in, this is what I mean earlier when I say the object is a container. It contains data that the solver needs. It's containing this density data, and again, later it will contain velocity and maybe some other stuff. So now if we press play, we have a simulation happening where it's disappearing. Well, why is it disappearing? Well, it's disappearing because SideFX decided on the Pyro Solver to give you some basic things that you might use. Shredding for fire, disturbance for breaking up the edges of your simulation, sharpening also for fire for the most part. Turbulence is one that we want. The thing is, is so dissipation, when it's on by default, all dissipation does, at least on the Pyro Solver, is make your stuff disappear. Now, that is something that we're going to want. It approximates things getting so either evaporated in the case of steam or diffuse in the case of other things that you don't see it anymore. That is something that we're gonna want. The problem is is that on the pyro solver, it just doesn't expose all of the parameters that should be available to us. Here's dissipation and here's the tab for dissipation. There's not a lot here. There really should be a lot more. So where is everything else? Well, there's actually a dissipate micro solver. Microsolvers are the jigsaw puzzle, the jigsaw pieces rather, that make up the solver overall. So if you look in here, you'll see lots of little microsolvers. Here's that gas shredding one we were just saying, and here's uh, the vortex confinement, and the turbulence, and all that jazz. So those are exposed here, but they don't expose everything. And in the case of this, we're going to want everything. So we'll definitely get more into all the different microsolvers and how they will give you awesome looking results in the next lesson. But for now, we're just gonna start with a few. Um, and this is one of them. Well, actually, we're just gonna start with two. So hook it up to your solver here. The middle one you'll see is velocity update, and that's what we want. This is going to work on um, 
the stage of the solve where we're going to update velocities. You can really hook it up to one of the other ones, but this is where I like to put them, especially turbulence, which will actually be a velocity update. This one is, pu is plugged into the object. This is plugged into velocity update. So we press play, and now we're back to nothing happening again because everything's off here. And this isn't actually doing anything yet. We have evaporation rate set to zero. If we wanted to go back to making things disappear again, let's give it something like 0.5. That means every second, which again for us is 24 frames, every second, half of the density will disappear. So if we press play, there we go. We see it starting to disappear. So every second, there'll be half as much density as there was like the previous second. And we can scrub through our cache and see that happening. Not terribly interesting. Let's turn that off. Diffusion is very important. Diffusion is not it disappearing. Diffusion is it blurring outwards. It's supposed to approximate the, the ambient diffusion, literally, of small particles in the air. They're just gradually kind of move away from each other. The practical result is that you get a blur. Every frame, it's blurring the previous frame until we get an amorphous blob. Combine these two, I'll do 0.4 this time. Combine these two, it's going to move outwards, and as it moves outwards, it's going to disappear. So I don't really know what effect that is necessarily. Maybe it's a ghost disappearing, I don't know. These are all building blocks that will make for a very interesting simulation. Any one of them on their own isn't enough, but that is the, the mastery of, of working with, whether it's pyro or really any smoke simulation comes in, is learning how to massage these numbers and use them and respond to art direction. You, somebody might say, oh, we'll have it dissipate more, have it diffuse less. You'll need to know how to wrangle these things. So let's also add that turbulence that we talked about. Now I made an, a merge dop here because I want, I want both of these things to be considered. Turbulence is another microsolver. And what turbulence is going to do here, when we press play, you can see it's really making a move around now. Let's actually turn off this one to get a better idea. So now we're no longer, this is the bypass, just as it's a bypass in Sopplan, this is going to bypass in Dopplan as well. So here it is. Velocities are being added into the simulation, and those velocities are vectors, vectors that are stored at every single cell, and then the solver takes the density, density amounts per cell and the vector amount per cell and will move them. We actually have a visualized turbulence here. And now I can see it. This cool blue looking pasta hair thing here, this is the velocity per cell. If you follow any one of them, you'll see that starting here, for example, over the course of a second, it's going to advect, meaning move something along a velocity from here to here. Now really, the value being stored in every voxel is not a curved amount, it's just one direction. The visualization here is showing us in a curved amount because it's showing us an entire second's worth of movement, whereas you're really only storing the subframe amount per voxel. So the streamer length is one. If I change that to this, which is one divided by how many frames per second, you'll see instead, this is more what it is. You see we get these nice eddies and everything, looking pretty cool. So we get these, more like these line segments, and this is more accurate. By, incre by increasing the streamer length, it's just showing you that, well, once the density moves from here to here, and then it gets moved from here to here, and then it gets moved from here to here, it's basically predicting where it will go over the course of a full second, which is useful and looks cooler anyway, so we'll keep it on. Now this is the visualization of the turbulence itself, not of the actual velocities that are in, that are being stored in the voxels. These are the velocities that are being added 
to the simulation. So I'm going to turn that off. And we're going to visualize the actual velocity in the simulation now here. So now you can see this is the resultant velocity. You can see how because of all this turbulence is being added here, it turns red pretty fast. Red, of course, meaning that there's more, that the magnitude is much higher. The microcellular by default knows to only add turbulence where there's actually smoke to affect anyway. Don't waste your time adding turbulence out here. It's just a, a nice a bit of efficiency that the pyro solver is doing. And aren't these patterns cool? I love that. It's really cool. So we have density being viewed and we have velocity being viewed. And if we middle click on this, you can see, oh, look at all these things now. Our, our object is storing velocity information. It's storing density information and it's storing pressure information which is important when doing an actual liquid solve for reasons that we can get into in later, more advanced lessons. But in essence, the reason why things look as fluid as they do, as opposed to like, let's say a regular particle sim that doesn't know anything about pressure, is because of that. The, the pressure calculation is key to making things move as nicely and organically as they do. So. There you have it. We, we bring them all back together again. So we have turbulence being added every frame. We have it also diffusing outwards a little bit every frame, and we have it disappearing a little bit every frame. And then we see how they're all combined together. And it would actually be wise to not have it always be adding um, turbulence. So I would say, you can click this brain down here to temporarily say don't simulate things. That way I can scrub in and not trigger it being simulated. I'm going to set a key by alt left clicking, alt left clicking here. And then maybe by this frame, I'll have it no longer add turbulence. So we go back to the first frame, we turn it back on, and we'll see it doing its turbulence thing. And now it's going to stop adding turbulence. And you can see how it's no longer frothing. It's still moving because there's still velocity in the, si in the simulation. And until those ve velocities die down, it's going to move a little bit. Let's actually turn that velocity back up so you can see it. It's getting real feisty. And then I turn the turbulence down. And you can see it's calming down as time goes on. And eventually, it would converge on it not moving any anymore if we were to let it finish. Cool. So there you have it. Our first pyre simulation, starting from that pig's head. And now we're here.